What's up everybody? In this video, I want to discuss with you a topic in IT that's getting more and more important daily, and that is wireless. Now, we've done a little bit in Packet Tracer with setting up wireless networks and wireless access points, uh, but up until this point, we haven't done anything in the real world. Today, I want to show you how you can set up an access point on your network to improve performance, range, connectivity, and just have an overall better experience with the devices on your network that connect wirelessly. So first of all, let's consider what a wireless network is. So what is it? I mean, is it different from your physical network? Are you on a different IP scheme? How does that work? Well, let me say this. When I first started learning about wireless access points, I actually thought they were completely wireless, meaning you didn't connect to them at all. But the truth of the matter is, when you look at a wireless access point like this Ubiquiti AP, you will notice that um, it has a port. You see it? Right here. So, in most enterprise deployments, college campuses, or businesses, what you will find is access points maybe hanging from the ceiling. You would see that, you know, walk next time you go to your college campus or a, or a hospital or any large organization, look around for an access point. I'm sure you'll find one hanging from a ceiling, probably facing downward, and you'll find several of them. Um, I only have one because I, my, my uh, townhome is relatively small, and this should be just enough to cover the space that I need it for. So how does this work? Well, um, it essentially extends your network wirelessly. So it is an extension of your physical network that's already there. Um, DHCP is still going to operate. So if on your home router, you know you have a DHCP server running on it. So any device that is able to connect to the wireless network is going to get an IP address from DHCP on the router. Now a lot of the access points, and I know a lot of Ubiquiti's access points, have DHCP server options that you can enable. In this case, I'm not going to enable that. But let's keep talking about exactly how you would, you would think about this design. Um, well you would want to connect this back to the switch, right? So you would connect a, um, an Ethernet cable here and you would run it to wherever your router is. Uh, in my home office and studio, it's going to be relatively simple because this is where I'm putting the access point. Um, so I don't have to run a long cable or drill holes in the, in the floor or, you know. So running cable for me is just using a patch cable. But for you, you may want to consider where you're going to position your router, where your router's already positioned, and then where you're going to position this access point to best, you know, connect you um, and have the best coverage within the areas you want to have a wireless access in. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and begin with this setup. Really, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to decide where you're going to put this thing. So. What do I mean by that? I mean, you got to look at where your router is, where your switch is, so where are these devices you're going to be physically connecting to, and then determine it from there. So this may mean you have to drill some holes, or this might just mean you have to mount it up on the wall. And in this situation, for me, I'm, I'm putting this access point as close as possible to my router. Again, I don't have a very large um, home. So I'm able to put this really anywhere. Um, so for you, you may want to consider that first. So pause the video and go figure that out before we move forward. So if you figured that out, um, great. Let's talk about how we're going to do this. So for me, I'm not going to use this bracket, but you might. You know, if you're using this in a business environment, you would put this on the back of the ceiling tile, put some screws through this, and then, you know, make sure that they're aligned with the back of this and it would be firmly mounted onto a ceiling tile. But for me, I'm just going to hold on to this in case I need it in the future. I just wanted you to know that we have it. The other two things you're going to need. You're going to need two Ethernet cables. And I'll show you why you need two. You're like, oh, but there was only one port on the back of that. I'll get to it, I promise. So you're, you're going to need at least two. 
one of the things that comes in the box with this Ubiquity AP, and this is a uh, Ubiquity um, light, AP AC light, uh, very inexpensive and amazing access point. I really love Ubiquity's wireless products. Please, if you get the chance, you need to try these out. <laughs> so check this out here. This is what they call a PoE injector. PoE, we've mentioned it in a video, haven't done a whole lot in terms of the you know, configuring or working with it, but I do need you to know what PoE is, and that's power over Ethernet, meaning it's not just data that can be sent over a network, but also you can power a device over the network. How cool is that? I mean, you don't need a power cable, right? In most cases with these access points, they're going to be in such weird areas that it would be uh, annoying to have to run power cables everywhere and through the ceiling. So you could just run an Ethernet cable and power it. Um, I don't have a PoE switch at my house right now. So guess what? This PoE injector is going to work wonders because as you can see, um, it actually will serve to be the PoE port, meaning this port will actually power the access point. And this port will be where data is transferred through uh, the access point antennas receiving it and then out onto my, uh, my physical network here. So let's, let's look at that. How would that connect? We look at, you know, the port here. There's only one. So what I'll tell you here is you'll connect the cable from the PoE port to the access points port. And then the LAN cable, you can guess it will go to the either your switch or you know your standalone switch or your switch on the router. All right, let's make those connections. All right. So I've run my cables. I've got this one right here, this long blue one that is actually running from the back of my router. And this yellow one as you can see is coming off of the access point here on the wall. Now, the way that I actually mounted this on the, the, the wall was a couple of command strips. Believe it or not, that worked perfectly fine. This is not a very heavy, heavy device. Um, so I, I'm testing that. I would like to see how this stands the test of time. Uh, but it, it, in, in the past, I found that command strips are pretty great for just about everything. In a business environment, I wouldn't recommend it. I would recommend you use the bracket. However, um, you know this yellow cable, which is coming off the the power uh, the access point, needs to be connecting to the PoE port on this PoE injector. So I'm going to go ahead and connect that. We'll look to see if we see any power. You see how there was a light that started up and turned on right around the ring here on around the ubiquity logo that tells me that the power is working and then we're gonna pull out this blue cable let me grab it this blue cable is going from my router into the LAN port this is what's gonna connect me to the network so remember the yellow cable I've got running to the ubiquity access point is going to the PoE port and then this blue cable I've got from the router is running into the LAN port. So let's check it out. Now that we have our physical connections up, we're gonna use the Unify controller by Ubiquity in software to configure this device. All right, so this is where you're gonna need to put on your network or system administrator hat and tell everybody in the house that you're gonna be momentarily bringing the network down. Um, for them, that's gonna look like they can't connect wirelessly. They can't use the streaming devices, they can't use their phone to connect to the internet unless they have cellular data. Um, so that's good practice because when you get into a uh, bigger environment, more formal environment, as many IT folks will tell you, you're gonna have to notify people when the network goes down, right? You gotta set that expectation, and you may wanna set that expectation in a, in a really exciting way, not like, okay, we're bringing it down, people, deal with it. You don't wanna do that. You wanna be like, well, we're, we're gonna bring the network down for maintenance and upgrades so that when it comes back up, you might, increase, you might experience some vast improvements. You might see your games operating faster. 
and you could tell your family that. Or at work, you could say, you might be able to open that application much faster and be able to serve people quicker. So that's one thing to definitely consider. So announce that. I've done that with my wife. Um, thankfully, she's kind-hearted and wonderful, so she's not mad at me or anything. So the, the after you've done that, you've done the, the people side of it, you want to get into the technical side, and that is bringing your network down, your, your wireless network that was on the router, and that's what I'm doing because my wireless network is currently on my router. I'm going to bring that down so that, that it doesn't conflict with the access point. So here's how I'm going to do that. I'm going to find out, and this is how you would find out what your IP address is of the router. If you've never done this before, you're going to need to find out what your router IP is. So how do you do that? You do IP config. You'll notice I have a lot more output than you probably will just because I've got uh, virtual adapters. So here, the first one here is my Ethernet adapter. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to look for the default gateway. And remember, we talked about the default gateway being the way that uh, tra uh, the device that traffic will travel through to get to the Internet. So we see here, that's the IP address of my default gateway. What do I do with that? Well, I type it into the browser. I'll go 10.388.1. And I'm going to type in the credentials. I don't care if you know the username. I'm just not going to tell you the password. Well, let me see. So I'm logging in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the wireless settings on this device. Right? And where do you think I would go for that? You would go to connection and Wi-Fi. Right? So what I'm going to do is... And, and Right now, this will not bring my PC down, or the uh, I'm using my laptop to actually capture this um, video. I, I, I'm connected physically to my router, so when I bring the Wi-Fi down, I still keep an internet act, a connection, because there's a Wi-Fi module of the router. You see, most home devices are what you call an ISR, an integrated service router, which means it has integrated services. Integrated services like routing, uh, switching, Wi-Fi. Now all of that can actually take away performance from other areas of the device. So this is really kind of like distributing our workload. And now that access point is going to be my primary. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into uh, this network which is the exchange, and I'm going to disable it. So I've disabled it. Now that it's down, I'm going to bring my settings, uh, or just confirm my settings on that other Wi-Fi network because I forgot which, uh, I forgot if I've turned it off or not. And sure enough, I have this one disabled as well. Awesome. Now, what I want you to go ahead and do is go out to Ubiquiti's website and I want you to download the Unify controller. So we brought the network down, now it's time to get the Unify controller. So you can Google Unify controller. Go to downloads. Give it some time and you will find the Unify network controller here. I already have it installed so I'm not going to go through the process of downloading it. Um, installing is a pretty straightforward process. They actually are doing a lot more with software-defined networking and being able to give you more functionality in terms of configuring your devices before you get them and being able to have an app on your phone and all that will cover. But uh, for now, just know that uh, the reason they want you to set up an account online with Ubiquity is because they're integrating more SDN. Um, there's a lot of great things coming down the pipeline that I'm watching with Ubiquity, so I would recommend go for it. They do give you the option to do it offline as well. So, um, but we're going to do it the way that they, that, uh, they want you to, and that is with an online account. So I've got the controller open. Once you've got it installed, you're going to see this option above me right here uh, to launch the controller. So I'll say launch in a browser, and it is browser-based. Uh, and it's going to ask me to create a network. So if I don't already have a network, it's going to have me create one. Uh, I'm going to scoot out of your way so you can see. You'll see here I'm going to name mine, you know, 
a typical naming convention. Accept the terms. Next, do that. And then I'm going to sign in with my username. So automatically optimize my network. I'm not going to do the auto backup. Um, I don't have that much of a sophisticated setup yet. I do plan on getting a whole Meraki stack where there's, you know, a switch and then the edge router I'm looking at. So, and the UCM, uh, which is awesome. Or the uh, I'm sorry the UDM the dream machine so then you'll next through that it already auto discovered the AP how cool is that they've got their own discovery protocol that runs uh, it's looking for the device um, why did it already have an IP address why didn't we have to statically assign it think about it well because I physically connected that AP to the router and DHCP is still running on the router the only thing I deactivated on the router was the um, the Wi-Fi module. So there it is, auto discovered. I'm gonna go next. The Wi-Fi name. I'm gonna move this out of the way so you guys don't see it. I will say the consideration here. This is your SSID, which is the service set identifier, which is what your uh, wireless devices like your phones look for when they initially come in contact with the Wi-Fi. They have all those wireless network profiles in their uh, saving or their in their settings saved so you don't have to type in a password every time you go over to a friend's house to reconnect to the Wi-Fi your phone saves all that and your laptop saves all that so that's what we're essentially typing in here I'm gonna make sure to type in the settings from um, my my last my last Wi-Fi network so and I'll tell you why so that when people connect and come back and you know my wife when this network goes up her phone will automatically connect or when friends come over their their devices will automatically connect because while it's a new device the name and the password are are the same right so your phone doesn't really know the difference or your devices really don't know the difference so um, that is something to be considered for security too because hackers can take advantage of that if they know you're your network name and the password, they could set up a rogue AP and start capturing traffic and have your devices going through their device. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this up. Uh, uh, I'll skip ahead to the next portion of the video where I'll show you what the configuration looks like. Once you're done setting up your initial network, you will get to see the unified dashboard. Right now, you'll notice that I've only got one access point, so there is going to be some limited functionality to this dashboard that we could dive into in a whole series, really. We could do a series on Unify and Ubiquity alone. I do plan on, on building out a Ubiquity stack here at the house. Um, I want to get the Dream Machine, I want to get the Switch, I want to get the Edge Router, and see how easy it is to control all of the devices through this dashboard which you can see is very intuitive um, there is a place for GUIs in this world right I know that we have many of the platforms are moving to a controller based model and they are doing online dashboards like Meraki um, and this really is just kinda like your own dashboard that you don't have to pay a monthly fee for like you would if you were gonna use a Meraki or a mist and mist is a system you may want to look into um, but let's look at it so we can see here we got a few different options that tell us you know internet capacity right and I don't have that functionality because I don't have the unify security gateway that's coming soon I don't have any of the switches but I do have the access point access point which you just watched me set up as soon as this system was done being installed it indicated that I had three clients connected so I must have done everything right and, and you know I hopefully you did as well and that is I set up my network name which is the SSID and I set up the same password so that anyone that had pri previously connected when my router was the primary access point um, they'll be able to connect again and all the devices will just automatically connect over time metrics are going to populate in here right we've had some time pass by so we have seen some data here 
Um, so, but over time, we're going to see more and more. Um, and, and there's just so many options here that we could really just cover in a whole series. I wanted to show you one final thing before moving on, and that is, um, if I can find it, the logs events. Yeah, I'm sorry. Here it is. So this is your events, right? So you can look at when someone joined or when a device joined all the logs and every router has this but is it presented in such a way the thing about networking and really in security too and log aggregation is how can you make logs digestible and i i really think that ubiquity uh they figured it out with this dashboard um and i'm i'm excited about continuing to use this and continuing to build on top of this oh again you can flip over themes too so you got the dark theme and the light theme, whatever is your style. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope you've learned and been able to set up your network and your access point using this video. If you have any questions or comments or ideas about videos for the future or about anything that you've learned so far, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, you can comment on it or you can shoot me an email or connect with me on social. So I'm, I'm, thank you. I thank you so much. And I'm very grateful for having you, um, for this video. And I'm looking forward to having you in the next one. Bye.